What's up everyone? Welcome to a special Tuesday edition of the Poker Vlog. Today we have a very exciting uh, cash game session in Springfield, Missouri. Back at the new-ish uh, location, we have an ad in this video, which is pretty crazy for a really cool product. Give you a little uh, preview. It's a playing card product. I think you really enjoy. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into things. Headed out to a very late night session. It's dark, it's cold. Here we go. So guys, I actually have a pretty interesting product to show you today. Uh, for the first time, we're doing like an actual ad on the channel. So what we're talking about today, what we're looking at, Magpie Playing Cards. Now these are a new poker deck, a new company. Their goal is to make poker more accessible to new players. And this deck definitely accomplishes that with all of its tips and uh, instructions on how to actually play. They've got hand rankings, all that kind of good stuff. They're also gonna be super high quality Copag cards. So they're gonna be super durable. Uh, yeah, this is just a really, really cool product. I think you guys would definitely enjoy it. Perfect for a home game where you're cycling new players in and out. So click on the link to the Kickstarter down below. They've got more information. Check it out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Poker Vlog. We are headed out to a late night session here in Springfield, Missouri, playing in a cash game, later start time than normal. Pretty excited to get back in the streets. Haven't played in a little bit. Really gonna hopefully run up a stack here. Feeling pretty good, feeling pretty positive. Play some basketball today. Body feels good. Got a little bit of a headache going on, but I think that's from uh, dehydration earlier in the day. Anyway, time to get into the action. Trying to bring you some whole card footage once again after not being able to do that playing in the casino. Let's get after it. What's up, guys? First hand we're going to look at of the session. We've got whole cards. We've got ace, queen, offsuit, under the gun. Start this hand with about $500. And we're playing eight handed. I go ahead and open it up to 10 bucks. Our very active opponent who has the cute dog under the gun plus two raises it up to 30 bucks. Once the action gets back to me, don't think I have too much of a decision here. I'm just gonna go ahead and make the call. So we are feeling pretty decent. Could have three bet here, but I think it's okay to just go ahead and make the call. So flop comes down a pretty interesting one for us. Flop is queen, jack four. So we're flopping top pair, top kicker. I go ahead and check to the three better. I think I need to be doing this the vast majority of the times, whether I hit or I miss. He goes ahead and puts out a bet of $55. I don't think I have a choice here really either. I'm just gonna go ahead and make the call and we're gonna proceed to a turn card. Turn comes down the 10 of hearts. I'm checking again, obviously, no real reason to do anything too crazy here. He lets us know that he uh, is gonna apply the pressure when he puts in $125. So I don't think that uh, a whole lot of different things make sense here. I think he's going to be on a draw a decent amount of time. He could have a queen with the worst kicker. He could have some two pair combinations. Uh, I think we just gotta make the call again. So it takes us a little bit. We're considering our options. Obviously it's a big bat, but we go ahead and make the call and we are off to see a river. The river comes down a pretty interesting one. It's the king of hearts. So we do have the ace of hearts. So we block the backdoor uh, flush draw. We block the nuts to the backdoor flush draw. And we also block the straights a little bit. Um, not really sure what to do. Action checks through luckily for us. He shows down nothing. Mucks his hand after I flip over my cards. He makes us wait a little bit for rolling his over. We go ahead and take this one down. Stacking up chips in the very first hand, a nice size pot, feels really, really good. For sure, no complaints for us. Let's go ahead and make this a big session any way that we possibly can. So the next thing we're gonna look at, I've got ace five of diamonds from the cutoff, starting this game with about 650 bucks. The small blind opens up to $15 over a button straddle, the colonel and under the gun plus one, and I and the cutoff both end up making the call. So we're off to see a flop. I kind of wish that I would have three bet this hand, but oh well. Flop comes down, jack, jack five. So we catch a little piece, but nothing to get too excited about. The small blind bets out 25 bucks. The colonel folds and I decide to go ahead and make the call here. I'm not sure if I love my call, but I don't really think I have a whole lot uh, of options here. I think I just have a pretty straightforward call. The turn is a seven and we end up both checking our options here on the turn. Don't hate that too much either. The river comes out of seven. 
my opponent bets $35 here, as I would be only calling to try and chop. I don't really think it's worth it, so I go ahead and lay this one down. Not sure I like the fold though. In this next hand, I look down at 10 nine of hearts from the hijack, starting this hand off about $610. There's a button straddle, there are four callers to me, and I decide it's time to go ahead and raise it up. I make it $25, button, under the gun, and the cutoff all make the call. So we are off to see a flop, which comes down a middling one for us. The flop is 764 with the seven of hearts. So not super excited about this flop. Um, the action ends up checking the cutoff, who has seemed like a very tight player. I've not played with him before. He goes ahead and puts out $60, uh, fairly hefty size bet, uh, not in relation to the pot, but in relation to the player making the bet. I don't really think I have too many options here. Obviously, if there are two hearts on the board or if I had some sort of open-ended straight draw, I could um, stick around and try and recognize some equity here, but I don't think I have much, so time to go ahead and get out of there. So this hand was one of the more interesting ones of the session. I looked down at ace-jack offsuit for middle position, starting the hand off with like $575. There are a couple limbs to me. I go ahead and make it 15 bucks, and we get two callers. So we are off to see a flop, which comes down a pretty interesting one for us, I suppose, depending on how we uh, decide to play it. The flop is king nine four with two hearts. So the action ends up checking to me. So that's a good sign. I go ahead and bet out $40 and we get one caller. So obviously we were hoping to take this down now uh, against the opponent that we were facing, uh, at least one of the opponents that we were facing, we were not necessarily expecting to take it down with just one bet. Figured we'd probably have to fire multiple bullets. So ends up we get one call here and you see the person across the table from us go into the tank for just a little bit, kind of trying to decide. Obviously this would be a really bad spot for us to have to go multi-way, but we get the fold there. So we're off to see the turn which comes down the six of diamonds. Now I decide to go ahead and continue telling the story. I bet $65 trying to charge all the draws that could have been live on the flop. Uh, unfortunately, our opponent pretty much snap calls us so without thinking about it for very long. So the river comes down, the 10 of spades. We've got a decision to make. Was he just on a flush draw? Is it time to just fire out here? We decide to fire $125. He snap folds, we instantly take it down. Great to get the snap fold, not have to sweat it out. We win another nice size pot and we are stacking up chips once again. Man, it feels good when bluffs work out. Not too much later, I look down at ace three of hearts from the small blind, starting this hand with about 650 bucks. Under the gun limps, under the gun plus one limps, cutoff makes it 12, I call, under the gun and under the gun plus one both make the call. So we're off to see a flop with a pretty decent hand. Flop comes down, king high with two hearts. So great spot for us. Obviously, I'm going to check here. Action gets to the cutoff, who bets $25. I call, and then the under-the-gun player makes it $75. Now, he thinks about it for a little bit. Not really sure what he's going to be making it $75 with here. The only hands that really make sense to me for him to have are something like maybe king nine or pocket nines or pocket sevens. Maybe nine seven also. I'm not really sure, though. Not a whole lot really sticks out to me as making a lot of sense for him to check raise with, unless he has a flush draw like me, which I guess is at least a theoretical possibility. Anyway, once the action gets to me, I call and we are off to see a turn, which comes down the two of diamonds. So on this turn, obviously I think I'm just checking here. I really don't like what I did on the flop. I should have taken a much more aggressive route. Once the action gets to the under the gun player here, he bets $125. So obviously I think it's time for me to just get out of here. Unfortunately, that is not what I ended up doing. I end up putting in the call, trying to hit my flush way too hard. The river, unfortunately, does not cooperate. It comes down the queen of clubs, so yikes, don't like that. We end up both checking, and he shows us king jack offsuit. So we lose this hand, definitely could have won it with a more aggressive route. Oh well. Okay guys, so unfortunately, after that last hand, our phone is about dead. I'm uh, going to have to switch back to this way of doing hands for the last uh, five or six hands. So I look down at queen 10 of hearts from the big line, starting this hand with about $550. The under the gun player limps, middle position player makes it $10. There are several callers, including me and the under the gun limper. 
Flop comes down, a pretty good one for us. It's 10 high, rainbow. Action checks the other gun player who donk bets $25. Kind of surprising to see a donk bet. Definitely indicative of some strength here. I go ahead and call anyway for 25 bucks after the action folds to me. Uh, we're off to see a turn, which comes down the king of hearts. I go ahead and check. Under the gun bets $50. I don't think I have a whole lot of options here except for to just make the call again. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know where I'm at in this hand. I feel like I'm always against two pair or something like that. Anyway, River comes down a very interesting card. It's the 10 of clubs. So we end up rivering trips here, feeling like we're in a pretty good spot. I go ahead and check, feeling like he's 100% going to be firing a bet here. And sure enough, he puts out $100. So now I have a decision to make. What am I really beating at this point? I can't really find very much. He's either going to have flopped some sort of weird two pair, in which case he could have uh, hit a full house at this point. I guess he could have 8-4, but that seems kind of unlikely. Um, I don't think I can get value from anything. Like, what am I going to get value from? Did he play an over pair this way? I don't think so. I end up thinking about it for quite a while before putting in just the call. He flips over pocket eights for the flop set. He actually says he would have folded if I would have shoved, which is impossible. There's no way that's true. Um, but oh well, we lose this one. Feel pretty dumb about how we played it. Uh, yeah, oh well. A little while later, we look down at queen jack of spades. We're starting this hand with about $400 and we are on the button. The action folds to me, which is kind of surprising. I go ahead and make it 12, which is my standard size when the pot is unopened to me. And the small blind and the big blind both end up making the call. So the flop comes down a fairly terrible one for us. I don't know. The flop is 975 with one spade. So yikes. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a whiff for us. Small blind checks. Big blind bets $10. So I don't really understand this donk lead once again. I decide to go ahead and peel one off. There are some good cards for us that we can uh, pick up some equity. And we obviously have two over cards. So we are off to see the turn after the small blind makes the call. Turn is the best card in the deck for us, pretty much. The turn is a 10 of spades. So now we have a flush draw and a straight draw. So kind of feeling good about this spot. The action is checking to me. So definitely time to lead out here. I bet $25 and somehow the small blind calls. So I'm not really sure what the small blind had in this spot, um, but we're off to see a river. River comes down the five of hearts, small blind checks, and I decide to go ahead and bomb it. This is one of the worst hands I'm gonna show up with here. So time to go ahead and see if we can take it down with a bluff. I fire out $65 and he goes well into the tank, thinking about it for quite a while before eventually putting in the fold. So we're very happy to take this one down, uh, get a little bluff through. Wish we could have been value betting there, but oh well. I think the result would have been the same. Not really sure what he had. Can't have been much. A little bit after that, we look down at pocket queens from under the gun plus one, starting this handoff with about $450. I go ahead and open up to 15 and we get two callers. So we are off to see this flop three ways. Flop is a not great one for us. We see an over card on this flop, king high, Action is checking to me. I decide to go ahead and see bet here. Obviously, I'm going to have lots of kings in my range, so I can go ahead and see bet, I think. And I put out $25 in the big blind call. So we are off to see a turn heads up, which is the four of hearts. So not a bad card for us, I guess. And the action checks through. So after seeing that call, I'm pretty sure we are up against the king. Um, the river comes down two of spades. And the big blind bets out for $30. So this is a pretty small bet into this pot. Um, yeah, I don't know. For this price, I just don't feel like I can fold. I really can't figure out what I'm beating here. Maybe as a nine. I'm not really sure. But I make the call. And unfortunately, he shows us king-queen offsuit. So we lose this one. I don't really like how I played it. I think I could maybe fold there. I was very certain that he had a king. But oh well. Not too much later, I look down at pocket jacks from the cutoff, starting this handle with about $375. There's several callers of the button straddle. I go ahead and make it 20 bucks, and the button and the small blind, who is definitely a fun player, make the call. The flop comes down, a pretty good one for us. The flop is 9-9 nine, nine deuce. So don't think we need to be too scared. Obviously, there are going to be some nines in their range, but we've got to overpair. Better than seeing an ace or a king or a queen. Small blind bets 30 bucks. I go ahead and call, and the button folds. So we are fully in let the button or let the small blind blast off in this hand. So turn comes down a two. 
So we've got a double paired board now, still feeling fine with our pocket jacks. Small blind bets $50, and I'm gonna make the call once again. This guy is definitely blasting off into this, not really sure what he's gonna have. He could literally have anything. The river comes down another two, so there's a full house on the board, pretty weird. We end up both checking, and uh, as soon as I flip over my hand, he mucks his cards, so maybe he had an ace or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe I missed some value on the river. I don't really think so, though. So we end up taking this one down. Feel okay with how we played it, especially against this in particular player. Quite a while later, we've been card dead for a long time. I look down at King Jack of Spades from the cutoff, starting this hand off with about $500. There's a button straddle, there are several colors of the button straddle, and I go ahead and make it 20 bucks. The small blind and the button are my only colors. The flop comes down a pretty good one for us. Flop is king 10-7 with a king and 10 of diamonds. So we've got top pair, good kicker, we've got some backdoor straight draws, feeling pretty decent about our spot. Small blind checks, I go ahead and bet out $35, and the button calls. So we're going to a turn, out of position, we don't love that, but we feel like our range is definitely in a pretty good spot. The turn is a three of clubs. I go ahead and bet out $75, and the button, without thinking about it for very long, makes the call. So, kind of weird. Um, not really sure what he can have here. I guess he could have a worse king or some sort of uh, straight or flush draw. I think the draws definitely make more sense here. The river comes down the 10 of clubs. So not a good card for us. Uh, I think we have to go into check call mode on that, uh, the board pairing on that card. If it had been a seven that had paired the board or a three that had paired the board, I think we'd be okay. But a 10, he's gonna have some tens here, I think. So after I check, the button thinks about it for a little bit, not very long, and bets $200. So a very large sizing here. Um, not really sure what to do. I think with all of the straight and flush draws breaking out, and the way that he's played this hand overall, I can make the call here. I was very uncomfortable with this call though. So after a long time thinking, I eventually slide in $200 and he says, good call or you're good or you were right or something like that. So we take this one down, catch a bluff, pretty nice hand. Uh, we're up a good bit. We end up playing for quite a while longer. Nothing really exciting happens in the next like maybe hour or hour and a half. Uh, we win some small ones and lose some small ones, but we're gonna go ahead and rack up and go ahead and get out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Well guys, that was a nice little session. In for 500, out for 710. Pretty happy with how I played. Wasn't about to do an outro in the car. It was like one o'clock in the morning and it was cold. Uh, Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for supporting the channel. Check below and see if you're subscribed. Hit that thumbs up button. It really helps out a lot. Uh, check out the Magpie playing cards uh, Kickstarter down below. I think it's a pretty interesting opportunity to be involved in and uh, a great product. So anyway, that's all I got for this one. Thanks again for watching. We'll be back with weekly uploads. Uh, every Monday is the plan. So I will see you guys next Monday. Take it easy.